Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have an absolutely maddening fruit to examine for the encyclopedia as we delve into the shadows of the Kage Kage no Mi. The Kage Kage no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to conjure and control shadows as if they were some sort of tangible physical substance. It was consumed in series by vampire penis lookalike Gecko Moria and first put on full display during the ever spooky Thriller Bark arc. This fruit takes its name directly for the Japanese word for shadow being kage, and as such, both Viz and Funimation went on to dub it as the shadow shadow fruit. That's right, no etymological messing around this week whatsoever, because we have a lot to get through with this one. But before we jump into it properly, I'd just like to point out that shadows in the One Piece world function extraordinarily differently to that of the real world, where they are a mere result of light. Now in this series, according to Brooke, a shadow is actually a second soul that is supposed to follow the movements of its master from birth to death. Now as someone who works in the world of professional lighting, this idea really irks me because it would imply that at any given time in the One Piece world, there can only ever be one light source because should there be two light sources at once, then we would have two shadows. So are both of those shadow souls or just one of them? And how does it get decided which shadow is the soul shadow? And then what happens to it when you're in a situation where there aren't any shadows? Like a completely blacked out room and just, just uh. But whatever the case, let's remember that shadows are extraordinarily important because it will enforce a lot of the crazy things that the Kage Kage no Mi is able to do. So let's begin with the idea that to the user of this fruit, all shadows are tangible. And not only that, but it allows the user to separate them from their owners. Assumedly, the user would only be able to perform this on what I'll be referring to as soul-based shadows. So referring to living things like animals or humans, for want of a better term, as opposed to objects which still have shadows, but not, uh, you know, soul shadows. Now, the most immediate benefit of removing the shadow of an individual is that it apparently sends them into an immediate coma that can last up to two whole days. So if this fruit is being used in a combat situation, removing your opponent's shadow is more or less an instant wing condition. Although with that said, it is possible to awaken a victim of a shadow theft earlier than this defined period, as demonstrated by Usopp when he pulled Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji back into the world by stating that there was a beautiful female swordsman with meat. Furthermore, living in the One Piece world without a shadow is made extraordinarily difficult by the fact that if a user walks into sunlight, they will be vaporized instantly like an old school vampire. As for the logic of why this happens, I suppose an argument could be made that the combination of the sun being a light source and the person not being able to produce a shadow creates a logical flaw in reality. So much so that instead of wanting to think about it, the sun just gets annoyed and destroys the person in question. Whatever the case, it happens to lead to another very easy win condition for the user of the Kage Kage no Mi, should they be fighting in sunlight. But apart from destroying their original masters, why else would the user of the Kage Kage no Mi want to take a shadow? Well, that's because shadow theft is only the beginning as the user can go on to insert their shadows into other living or even non-living vessels. So for example, with the latter, should the user place a shadow into a lifeless corpse, that will essentially give birth to a zombie minion, whom the user gradually gains control over. Of course, due to the shadow being a soul thing, the minion will retain the abilities and mannerisms of its former master. And crazily enough, there does not seem to be a limit of how many of these minion things the user can control at any given time. So that certainly does give rise to the potential of crafting an entire shadow zombie army. These zombies do have one particular weakness though, which is that they can be quote unquote purified by a concentrated injection of salt directly into their mouths. This is due to the fact that salt is an element of seawater, the natural enemy of all devil fruit users. And so it sends the shadows flying out of their vessel and returning to their original owners. But the interesting thing in this scenario is that once a shadow has left a vessel, it is possible for people who are not the user of the Kage Kage no Mi to capture them and even use them for their own advantage by inserting them into either their body or the body of another. As for why you would want to do this, well, get this. Because if this fruit was not crazy enough, apparently when a living thing takes on the shadow of another living thing, the individual is granted the power and abilities of the shadow's original master. Not only that, but this ability stacks. So if you absorb two shadows, then you get the power of both. And if you absorb 100 shadows, shadows, then you get the power of those 100 individuals. But not to be outdone, the user of the Kage Kage no Mi can also engage in this ability, and not only that, but they can actively summon shadows to themselves, making the absorption process and quick to access phenomenal power incredibly easy. Although even once a shadow has taken on a new master of sorts, the user of the fruit can still freely manipulate the shadow, which if you recall I previously stated, has to mimic the master at all times. Well, the reverse is also true, as should the shadow be manipulated, the master has to mimic the shadow in order to follow the natural laws of the One Piece world. This means that the user of the Kage Kage no Mi can contort bodies which shadows under their command into, well, just about any shape they desire, really, with seemingly no harm done to the actual vessel. But even without the shadows of others, the user can just go ahead and manipulate their own shadow, and quite notably, they can even manifest it into a sort of shadow liquid clone that is impervious to damage, and in fact has an intangibility aspect comparable to that of a Logia user. Furthermore, it can even change shape depending on the desires of the Kage Kage no Mi user, and to top it all off, even in sunlight, should the user detach their shadow, they will not burst into flames like everyone else due to, um, 
reasons. And did someone say teleportation? Because you can more or less achieve that with the clone as well, because at any given point, the user of this fruit can switch their body with their shadow clone. And with that, this fruit has become truly ridiculous. So it's time to examine how its user in the series Gecko Moria puts this absurd Paramecia to work. And having innovated and made use of everything stated above, you can't help but give him pretty high marks. The thing about Moria is that his entire philosophy is to become the Pirate King via the laziest means possible. So in turn, he uses the Kage Kage no Mi to ensure that someone else is always fighting for him, be it a zombie minion or his own shadow clone. However, there is a lot of room for criticism in Moria's use. Quite specifically, you could call him very negligent for allowing so many shadows taken directly by him to escape, which ended up in the body of Luffy, thus crafting Nightmare Luffy, which was a pretty big factor in Moria's eventual downfall. He also proved incredibly inexperienced or rusty in combat when he was forced to fight for himself, invoking the fruit's abilities to absorb a total of 1,000 shadows, which granted him mind-boggling power. However, Moria was entirely incapable of wielding them, allowing a basic gear second Luffy to dance circles around him and eventually defeat him in one-on-one -on -one combat. But in the end, Moria does get a pass. Although the fruit certainly had a ton of room for exploration and finesse from perhaps more proficient users. As for an awakening, look, given everything this fruit is capable of already, I'm not really sure what an awakening could really add to it. Maybe the user could start manipulating the shadows of objects, or perhaps even turning the environment into shadows to be manipulated according to the user's desires. Whatever the case, I see the prospect of an awakened Kage Kage no Mi user being capable of turning this reality into a true underworld. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming the ruler of shadows. While your fruit may be amazing, you do have several natural enemies to consider. The first of which is any form of powerful light, as depending on how it is used, it can reduce the size of shadows, and with perfect use, it can eliminate them entirely. And oddly enough, your second natural enemy would be the exact opposite, in pure darkness, as it does not allow for any shadows to be generated at all. Oh, and I'd also keep an eye out for any masters of Fishman Karate, as they do have the ability to control salt water, and that is bad news for your zombie minions, should you choose to invest in that route. And the only other thing I'd like to point out is that this devil fruit is a rare example of one that may just plain not work in the real world. Usually I like to consider real world applications of fruits, but given that shadows aren't souls in reality, this fruit may possibly end up being entirely ineffective. But looking back on the Kage Kage no Mi, I think I've seriously underestimated this fruit. In the past, I've constructed two top five best devil fruit lists on this channel, two years apart, and to be perfectly honest, I always gave this one a brief thought and then kind of moved on. That was a mistake. I mean, no, it may not be one of the top five, but it's damn close and probably even deserves an honorable mention. This fruit is so crazy and versatile that I feel like trying to summarize everything I just said in a conclusion would only lead to another essay's worth of words. That's just how stupidly powerful this fruit is. The potential for its use is legitimately limitless in the One Piece world. And you know what? At this point, I feel like I've said plenty about it already. Just eat the damn fruit. And with that, we are going to commit the Kage Kage no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we'll be moving on to investigating a much more niche devil fruit, which is very unfriendly to the visual medium of videos due to the whole invisibility thing with the Suke Suke no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Kage Kage no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Gecko Moria is essentially what happens when Hades and Ryuk have a threesome with Ursula, resulting in a scandalous Disney pregnancy.